Right. Why less exercise can be better for you. Megan. I'm down with that. <laughs> do you know why less exercise can be better for you? Yes. Then it's all you. <laughs> Just kidding. Today I'm going <laughs> to read verbatim. <laughs> yeah. We've got a blog we're going to dive into a little bit here. We'll read through it and then Megan will interject and we'll have some a uh, little bit more detail about all, everything in the blog. If you'd rather read it, you just read it. We'll send you the link. That's fine. But if you want to hear the deep dive, it's top secret, read between the lines stuff, that's what we're going to give in this video. And our banter. And our banter. Fun. That's the real reason people tune in. Is Yeah. Okay. Do people still say tune in? I don't know. Okay. Can I give I you a quick criticism on the camera real quick? Sure. Can you drop down in your chair just a smidge? There, now we can see the top of your head. You have hair. Anyone who only watches us or sees us in video thinks that we are close in height. <laughs> when we're standing, I'm a good head taller than Megan, which, not that I care. I'm just like, I, we've had people comment on that before who have only seen us in video and then they see us in person. They're like, oh, I had no idea Seth was so tall. Yeah. I have to stand on a stool yeah. when we do videos. Not that I'm short. But I'm seven videos. foot six and she's <laughs> six foot nine. So we're both just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's get to it. Okay. So, all right. Which of these statements is true? Number one, if you hear dogs barking, just ignore them. That's not the statement. We're starting over. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're starting over. Here we go. Which of these statements is true? Number one, if someone is in good shape, they probably work out around five times a week. And statement number two, if you aren't reaching your goals, you probably aren't exercising enough. Which of those statements is true? You want me to answer? Yeah. <laughs> just gonna, we'll just sit here in silence until someone um, telepathically answers the question. I know the answer. It's, okay, well, you can say. It's number one. No, neither one is true. Oh, They're... you stupid test maker. <laughs> I hate people like you. It's a trick question. They're, they're actually both dangerous lies, really, at yeah. or at least harmful lies. Um, so because, number one, so the first statement, if someone's in good shape, they probably work out five times a week. If you don't exercise at all, and you think that, okay, it's really not even worth it for me to exercise, um, if I can't be consistent at least five days a week, then that is possibly going to hold you back from ever getting started. So that's why that can be harmful, because if you don't start, then not good. Um, number two, if you aren't reaching your goals, you, are you laughing at the dogs? Yes. <laughs> let's, just, let's just put some personality in here. We have two dogs in the house right now. One, uh, they feed off of each other for barking and there could be nothing outside and one starts going and the other starts going and then it's just like this barking chaos that doesn't end. And uh, it's making some of our work a little bit tricky. <laughs> okay, I think we're done for now. Okay, statement number two was, if you aren't reaching your goals, you probably aren't exercising enough. So even if you do work out, if you don't get the results that you want, what that statement can do, if you think it's true, is it can cause you to blame yourself rather than faulty strategies, which is oftentimes the bigger problem. Um, and then that can push you to either quit or you can get hurt or burn out. So both of those things are not good. What we're gonna do is we're gonna show you why working out less is not only a, a viable option, it's actually a better idea for most people. And we're gonna give specific guidelines on it too in a little bit. Now, most people can accept the idea, the concept of something is better than nothing. I think a lot of people recognize that with exercise. What is harder to believe for a lot of people is that what we're saying is that less exercise can actually be more beneficial for a lot of people. But if you think about it, there you know that you can you can have too much of a good thing. So just a couple of quick examples of that. Number one, having a three day weekend from work. It's good, right? Yeah. Taking a two week vacation from work. That's even better. Mm -hmm. Never working and becoming homeless and hungry. Not so good. <laughs> Too much of a good thing. Right. Or having dessert once a month on a diet. Oh, that feels good. When you mm -hmm. haven't had anything and then you have dessert, that's good, right? How about having freedom in your diet to eat dessert more regularly? That's even better. 
right? What about eating so much dessert in one sitting that your stomach literally explodes? Is that possible? It's kind of a bummer if that happens. I don't, I don't know if it's possible. We need, to, we need to submit that to the what if. The point is <laughs> exercise can be the same way. So let's talk about the benefits of, of less exercise here. So it, it is true that something's better than nothing. Any tiny little bit of exercise or even just any kind of activity really is a good place to start. So that's the good with exercise, starting there. Unfortunately, the benefits of that can plateau really quickly. So if you want a higher quality of life so you consistently feel good and so it's easier for you to reach your long-term goals, eventually you're gonna to need to do more than just something. Uh, what most people don't realize, though, is that you don't have to exercise every day or even five times a week to see significant results. You could actually get totally jacked and have chiseled abs with less exercise than you realize. Now, that's not something that we're interested in. That's not a goal we're shooting for, and our clients aren't either. People we work with, they're, they're not concerned about getting muscles and a six pack, but it's worth men mentioning just because it's an extreme example of what's possible. Now, if you're like us and our clients and you have more sensible goals, like reaching a healthy weight, having more strength and energy to get through your day, just keeping up with your kids, doing less exercise is, is great for that too. And that's the part that's better. Yeah. So what about the bad? What about the not so good? It's going to help if we define what less and more really mean when it comes to exercise in the first that's place. That's what people really want to know is like, if I'm going to do less, what should I be doing? Yeah. Well, if I'm going to do it, what should I be doing? What's worth my time? Especially our clients we work with. 100%, which is, we're going to get into that. The first thing I want to do is talk about what is too much. Okay. So if, if you look at the highest performing athletes in the world, Olympians, whatever, whatever comes to mind, you'll have a hard time finding one who doesn't spend a really significant amount of time in the gym, which can lead people to think like, okay, I'm not a professional athlete, but if they're doing more, then why shouldn't I? Why wouldn't that be something that's also potentially good for me? But here's the thing is that high level athletes, they don't simply just work out more. They also have their nutrition really dialed in. They get adequate sleep. Some of them sleep 10 or more hours a night to make up for, to help recover from the training that they're doing. And also each workout is designed with a specific purpose. That's super intentional. They're not just trying to go get their butt kicked for the sake of doing more exercise. So if you aren't ready for those things, if you aren't ready to start sleeping more at night, or if you aren't in a place where you know how to eat nutritionally to stay in a really elite physical condition, uh, then don't take on an exercise program that leaves you completely feeling wrecked and certainly don't do that five times a week yeah. or, or even multiple times a week at all. Don't do a CrossFit athlete competition performers workout. If you're not, if, if you don't have those there. other yeah. things dialed in yeah. too. Yeah, for sure. So best case scenario with that is that you don't make any progress at all because what can happen is your body is just always trying to catch up to your workouts rather than getting ahead. So the workouts kind of beat you down. You only recover enough to just get back to where you were and you do that over and over again. That's best case scenario. Worst case is you actually end up getting hurt mm -hmm. or malnourished or you just give up and then lose any kind of progress. So that is the bad. And that is, in general, that is what too much exercise is. It's anything that beats up your body more than it builds it up. So how much is that specifically? <laughs> Everyone is going to be different as far as how much their body can withstand mm. before they reach a point of diminishing returns. So the professional athlete, they can do more because their whole career and their whole life is centered around training to be the best. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, just as an example, a mom who's in her 40s who stays at home with her kids, she has different priorities and so because of that, she's also going to have a different threshold for how much her body can recover from. Now, the good news is the difference between what you can accomplish at the very bottom range of what's effective and at the peak of your current threshold, like how much can you do, the difference is what, of what you can accomplish there is pretty negligible. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to get similar results anywhere kind of in that window. So you might as well just keep it realistic rather than trying to do more for hardly any extra reward. Um, 
So that kind of gives some guidelines on too much exercise. So now let's give the, the three specific guidelines that I have for staying at that bottom range of what's effective um, without having to, you know, keep pushing and pushing and pushing and potentially get to that point of diminishing returns. Guideline number one. Work out two to three times a week. Yes. And it's not that that's some kind of magical number. You, Wait. Yeah. It's okay. You don't have to go to the gym every day, five times a day, five days a week. Like that is more than what's necessary. Yep. Yeah. Trust, it, trust us. <laughs> it literally is more than what you need to be doing. So if you're not doing it, it's not, yeah, it's not a cop out. Yeah. It's not something's better than nothing. Two to three times a week will get you great results. Um, sometimes doing more than that does make sense. It just kind of depends. Like if you're doing super, super short workouts and you're just like, okay, I'm gonna do five minute workouts six days a week. Great, that's fine. Most people though end up two or three times a week. That that that's the number that I see with the vast majority of people that works that they can realistically commit to that mm -hmm. without sacrificing their bigger priorities like family or work or date nights, whatever those things. What's that? That's the thing I've read about on the internet. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you can get a lot done even with just one really good workout, to be honest. But mm. that two to three range puts you where you can literally get similar results to what you would get if you were working out five or six times a week. Now, I recommend prioritizing strength training to get the most bang for your buck with those two to three workouts. But at the very least, in order for this to be effective, you wanna make sure that you're following a good workout program that's designed specifically with your goals in mind, which is like what we do with our clients. So that's guideline number one, the two to three days a week. Guideline number two, do you want to give this one too? Nah. Okay. No. <laughs> stick, stick to about 30 minutes. I mean, I think most of our clients feel like they can commit 20 to 30 minutes. Um, some are more, some are less, just depends on what's going on in their lives. But yeah, that that's a pretty good goal to reach. Yeah, around 30-ish minutes. Most of our, you're right, most of our clients are somewhere between 20 to around 45 minutes. Mm. Um, and it, I didn't read that. Yeah, you just know, because <laughs> that's what we do. It's what it's what people can commit to. This is yeah. this is real life here. That gets results, too, yeah. without having to do something that's going to not be consistent and fizzle out. And again, you, it, it's, it's not a magic number. You can do shorter, you can do longer. It comes down mostly to personal preference. Some people just like to keep it short and get it over with. So they're like, mm -hmm. 20 minutes, great, I'm done, that's it. Um, and then uh, other people, they enjoy once they get into it, they like how they feel. And so they're like, no, I, I can only do two or three days a week at the most, but when I do it, I'm fine. So go ahead and give me 45 yeah. minutes. I wanna get that done. It doesn't matter. There is no right or wrong with I that. I think the biggest takeaway is to do what, oh, look, that's what you wrote down next, is <laughs> to uh, do what works for you and uh -huh. what works with your schedule and how you feel and pay attention to that versus just following some, what is it? T90, kill 90. <laughs> Power 98. Just some, Hard yeah. 95 or something. You know? Oh yeah, you, you're mixing up all of them, which is awesome. <laughs> Whatever it is. You know what she's talking about. Yes, it's personal preference. It's what you're going to stick with. And that's something that can even change over time. So maybe for now, you can only do 20 minutes. Maybe, mm -hmm. uh, maybe you're like, okay, I can do 45 minutes. But, oh, wait a second, it's the holiday season. I've got a bunch going on. Let's shorten it down to yeah. 20 to 30. It doesn't matter. Find what you're going to stick with. And then number three, guideline number three. Finish, I don't know what this is. Finish the workout feeling good. <laughs> good job. I didn't know what that was. <laughs> yeah. So a good workout program is going to be strategically challenging rather than just kicking your butt. Or sweating or feeling sore the next day. Those are not good metrics for a workout that's effective. Yeah, and it's not that those things are necessarily always bad, there's a time mm -hmm. and a place right. for that, but it's definitely not something that needs to happen on a regular basis. You don't so, need to feel the burn. Right, now, again, strategically challenging. So by all means, you should work hard and feel like you actually worked out and not just coast through the exercises, but at the end, your workout should help you feel better and not just be something that adds stress to your life and that makes you feel like you're gonna, you need to spend the rest of the day on the couch. Yeah. 
because that's not good for you either. Yeah, I think in general, most of our clients, when they do work out, they feel a little bit more elated, like yeah. emotionally and physically, just get a little boost. They don't feel drained, like they go need to take a nap or. Yeah, I uh, I always say, and I stole this from someone else, but the, another trainer who who said like eighty percent of your workouts are just gonna feel like okay, like I got through it, I feel fine, mm -hmm. and when you get done with it, like good, you're good to go, you can move on with your day. It was challenging, but not it didn't kill you. Ten percent of your workouts are gonna feel really tough really difficult, really hard. It could be because the workout's particularly hard or it could be because you're just tired that day, but 10% fall in that range. And then the other 10% are like, I feel really great. Yeah. And so maybe you do challenge yourself more on those days or maybe it's just, you, you know, the, the point is at least 80% of your workouts are gonna just be challenging, but gonna feel good at the end of it and be able to live live your life it's not going to affect your the rest of your day negatively again where you're just sitting on the couch because that's if you do this super hard workout for an hour and then you go lie on the couch the rest of the day or sit at the computer at work and then go home and go uh that's all i got then that's not something that's going to contribute to your long-term health so those are the three guidelines there are some other factors i want to just mention here quickly and then we'll close this out um if you don't get the results you want from exercise or or if the progress just stops after a while, which is super common, um, that the answer obviously isn't to do more exercise. But so let's just talk about what's actually going on and what you should do about it. So it could be that the program that you're on just isn't great. I don't know what you have next, but I want to interject here. Okay. I think also you haven't done it long enough. Is that in there? No, it's not, but that's a good point. Okay. So, you know, you work out for a week or two and you're not seeing the results. Yeah. You haven't done it long enough. That can definitely be it. A lot of people just don't have patience. Yeah. And they think they're, like you said, a couple weeks, they're not seeing enough results. Or they're trying to get bigger results than what they you should expect. So maybe you're seeing some progress, but it's not as much as you thought. It just wasn't realistic expectations to begin with. And that's something that we can actually help you with. What hear what you want to do and then kind of talk about what you should expect and how long that should take. Yeah. More common than that, I would say is that the program really isn't a, a, a very good one and not that it's a bad necessarily, but w most of what I see people doing in the gym is just really inefficient. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, you, you might get some results for a little while, but it's going to stop because what you're doing is just, it's not, the 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 work to reward ratio is way off so that's that's a big part of what i see is is that um there's also a very strong possibility that the way that you're eating isn't supporting your goals and it's not complementing your exercise routine effectively oh yeah that is a, that's a really big one so if all you're looking at is exercise that's a problem yeah because nutrition changes everything. Yeah, well, like when I said that at the end of our workouts, our clients usually feel good and elated. They're also always working on nutrition with that too. Yeah. Like it's it's a piece of what we do. So that's a good point. Yep. <clears throat> and then there's also other factors like maybe you're just not sleeping enough or mm -hmm. you're not getting good quality sleep. Uh, are you staring at your phone before bed for, or, or in bed for an hour before you go to sleep? Are your kids still crawling in bed? during the middle of the night yeah and some of that you can't change yeah. so i get that but there there have to be some realistic expectations along with that too then and all the more reason by the way if you've got really young kids who are keeping you up during the night all the more reason to not do more exercise because that's just going to prevent your body from recovering more so even more important to scale back and have maybe only one or two workouts a week yeah. Um, but it could also be that you're not managing stress effectively. More than likely, it's kind of a combination of all of this to some, like it's a little bit here, maybe a lot here. Your nutrition's not great. Your sleep is, could be a little bit better. It's probably a combination. What, what I can tell you for sure, because without talking to you personally, which we can do that too, but just for the sake of this video, whatever the underlying issues are, uh, diet and exercise make up a, a very significant chunk of the solution. There isn't some hidden secret that you're missing out on. There isn't some kind of sciency hack 
that is gonna move the needle for you in a really noticeable way. It all comes down to finding realistic strategies that will help you eat better and be more active without simply doing a ton of exercise. That's it. We can make that possible for you by what we do is we specialize, we create customized diet and exercise programs specifically for you to help you lose weight, feel healthier, even if you think that something may be wrong with you or like your age is holding your back, you back working against yeah, you. We take all that guesswork out too of trying to figure out which pieces are needing to be fixed and that you need to be consistent with or how much time you should be spending working out because this is going on. Like we just make it real clear as to what you should be doing to get results. Yep. So if you're ready to make an actual change, then talk to us, send us a message, leave us a comment, whatever you want to do. And you can apply to work with us. And if you're a good fit, we would be happy to help you out and figure out what's going to be the best strategies, the realistic ones that you're actually going to be able to stick with, not just work out more because that's not the answer. <laughs> so hopefully that was helpful. If you've got questions or comments, leave them here. We're, we do Q&As each month. We're happy to answer for that. We can go into more depth on anything. Um, otherwise, we will just see you next time on whatever video we do next. <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye.